Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for MassiveSynth.com. First, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please sign up at YouTube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. That's T-U-T-S. That way you can stay up to date with all the tutorials that we're throwing away. So today's video is going to be a tip and trick on how to use the bypass feature in Massive to clean up certain elements of your sound. So we're not going to recreate this uh, bass. It's kind of the... Uh, stereotypical quintessential style FM sounding bass for Deep House. If you guys are wondering how I made this sound, it's, it's super easy. Just load up a sine wave in an oscillator and apply some phase modulation with an envelope that's kind of, sh you know, short and plucky. And boom, you got it. If I turn off this phase mod, it's just a bunch of sine waves. So that's how you do that sound if any of you are wondering. But let's get into the bulk of what this video is going to be about. Well, I guess first it'd be easy just to pose, just to start this with a question. Have any of you ever loaded up like a sub bass or a sub kick sample and thought I should drench this in delay or reverb? Probably not, because the sub frequencies of your mix would get all messed up. Well, in Massive, you have that choice with this bypass function. So you'll notice I have two oscillators, oscillator one and oscillator two. The first oscillator in this sound is creating the bulk of the sound. It's that, just that FM style bass. And if I unsolo that, or uncheck it, and solo oscillator 2, it's just a sine wave. Well, the reason I did that is because I needed some low frequency content in this sound, because it's deep house, right? So if I play oscillator 1 without oscillator 2, check it out, and then with oscillator 2, you hear that sub bass in there, and that's, that's really helpful for deep house, garage, all that stuff. Okay, well now, what's not happening is uh, there's no delay or reverb being applied to that sub-frequency content. So if I play, right now I'm soloing oscillator 1. You should be able to hear the reverb and the delay. Well, if I solo oscillator 2, if I solo it correctly, you'll notice there's no reverb or delay. And that's really helpful because it, it makes your mix cleaner. Because you don't, you typically don't want to have delay and reverb on your sub-frequency content. I'm just adding it to this bass because the genre calls for it. So what you can do is go to well first when you when you want to use this trick, make sure you have your amp down on your oscillator that you want to use this bypass trick on. So if I turn this bypass down, you'll hear nothing. I'm hitting my keys and there's no sound. So what you'll do is you'll go to your routing tab. And in your routing tab, you'll select this little B that stands for bypass that's next to the oscillator that you want to bypass. That's what they stand for. So in this specific instance, it is oscillator 2, so I selected B. And now I did not want it, it's this little yellow line here, I did not want it running through FX1 or FX2 because I was using a delay on FX1 and a reverb on FX2. So I selected it to go into the EQ. Now when you do this, you won't hear any sound. Right, but when you turn this slider up in the bypass section of Massive, that oscillator starts to come back. And there's no reverb or delay or reverb. Now this is really useful not just for basses, you can also use this on leads. Let's say you have a lead sound that's too kind of just middle heavy, too many mid frequencies, and you need to add some high frequency content, but you don't want the high frequency content running into maybe your distortion or your delay or your reverb. Like in this case, just bypass it, throw it on the third oscillator or an open oscillator and don't have it run into your effects. This obviously works for almost any type of bass, digital growls, dubstep type things because you may not want the low frequency content running through because a lot of times you'll be using like the Bronner tube or one of the distortion modules in the FX slot and you may not want everything running through it. This way you can choose which ones go to what effects. It makes it a lot easier when you're kind of carving out your EQs in the mix because now I don't have with this specific sound. I don't have reverb, which is spreading out my stereo field a little and delay, conflicting with this kick. Just happening on the one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So there's a lot of low frequency content in the drums and now it's not conflicting. So it's a really useful way to clean that stuff up. And you can actually do some creative things with it. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things Massive. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.